Hey miners, Mining King here. Today, I'm going to be talking about the merge, which is on everybody's mind right now. So, let's get right into it. Alright guys, before we get into the video, I just want to uh, go over a couple things with you guys. The first one is, is I am going to start using the Amazon affiliate links. So, it does help me out and I do get a small percentage. It does not cost you guys any more money. I just want to be transparent with you guys. I just thought this was a good opportunity to kind of help scale the channel up a little bit so that way I can afford to get some more mining gear and things like that since I don't have a sponsorship at all. I do pay for everything out of pocket myself. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. It doesn't cost you guys anything extra if you use my links. It just gives me a small percentage when you guys do use them. As well as, if you guys could please like, share, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So, let's get back to it. In this video today, I will be going over the merge and some of the strategies and my thoughts and some of the things I'm going to be doing. But, this is not, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. So, please do your own research and do this at your own risk. We're talking about the Ethereum merge here, right? and it was already tested on the kiln test net and for the most part i'm not going to really go over this article i will leave it linked down below for you guys if you guys want to check it out but essentially there was a few small minor hiccups but to me from how i read this is that it was pretty much successful there was a few minor bugs but it wasn't enough to throw the test off so to me in my eyes, I think Ethereum is on track to do proof of stake. To me, in my mind, I'm just, I'm thinking June, right? I'm not, I'm making all my plans for June. Hey, if we get more time mining Ethereum, great. But worst case scenario, I'm just thinking June. That's just how I like to look at things like worst case scenario. So with that being in mind, am I currently buying GPUs right now? And the answer for right now is, Mostly no, unless it's a really, really good bargain and I can't pass it up and it's a great price for something, then I might consider it. But for most, on the most part, I am not currently buying GPUs right now. Let's talk about some things that I'm looking at going into, let's say proof of stake happened tomorrow, right? And these are all the things that I'm trying to prepare for right now. And this is kind of what I'm kind of gearing towards right now. I am looking into starting, and this is masternodes.online. I'll leave a link down below too. So I am looking into running a masternode for Flux um, on the Cumulus uh, you know, tier, which this site hasn't updated recently because it's no longer 10,000 Flux. It's only 1,000 Flux, so, which is why they don't have profitability up here for this. I've been seeing around $50 a month. Just think about this, you could get a little Raspberry Pi or one of those little mini PCs that uses almost no wattage. And then you can have a good return on your flux. To me, it's essentially staking in a, in a way. This is just a good, another passive income that you could get that doesn't take a lot of wattage, not a lot of power. So this is a good alternative for, let's say mining becomes unprofitable, severely unprofitable everybody decides to start turning off rigs well you could keep this on because it uses almost no electricity so it's not going to cost you that much to run this there is an initial startup depending upon if you're going to do a vps or you're going to run the node from your house when i do do my flux node i will be doing a video of like how to set it up the route that i went with and the cost and the breakdown and all you know and all that now, another option I'm looking at here is going to be a Furo masternode. Um, so you do need a thousand Furo to start this. You know, look, you're only making $1.33 a day. You're making like 10 bucks a week. But look, 500 bucks a year, though. And the requirements for this are also not very large. So it's also can be another low wattage, just a nice little passive income that you know just kind of trickles in and you could just have keep building your furo stack right here 
to me, I'm looking for passive ways like nodes um, that are low wattage, don't take a lot of power, and it, and it kind of just helps build your, your wallet and keep your wallet diverse. So for when the time comes and things come back up, let's say in three years, that you have you know a lot of different options and maybe one of your investments did well, like let's say Firo did well, but Flux didn't do so well. So to me, everything's kind of uncertain right now. So I kind of want to, I want to diversify myself and not just be on one token like Ethereum. Mining King, are you, are you mining Flux right now? Are you mining Firo right now? And I was at first, I did solo mine Firo on my 1070 rig for a week and I hit two blocks which was uh, 12 and a half euro. To me, once again, here's a shout out to Max Voltage, is he gave me a little bit of a better piece of advice. And this is once again, not financial advice, but this is just the advice he gave me. And I kind of just thought about it, right? Imagine, let's say your rig produces $6 a day. I'm just using just imaginary numbers, $6 a day in euro. You know, if you were to directly mine Firo with your rig, if it would make $6 of Firo every day, right? Well, what if you turn that rig on right now and you would mine Ethereum and it would be, it would give you $12 of Ethereum. So the thing is, is you want to mine what's most, most profitable and then you trade your Ethereum for the Firo because you will get twice as much Firo for it, if that makes sense. So if you're trying to start a node, and you want to do Flux or Furo, I suggest mining Ethereum and then using like a um, like simple swap to trade your Ethereum out for either Flux or Furo. Because that way you will most likely double your yield of that coin. Because if you mine a coin and the difficulty's up, you're going to get small yields of the coin. It's better to mine something more profitable that's worth more and then trade it for something that's less valuable because you'll get more of it, if that makes sense. Another thing that I'm gonna be looking at as far as like mining thing, you know, miners and nodes goes, I also picked up, I got in their queue and I did pick up one of these gold um, MNTD, minteds, I guess you can call them minteds, um, you know, helium hotspot miner. I know helium has been kind of up and down of recently and it's not as profitable anymore. But I am going to be doing a video of how to set it up, and I will do a video of profitability because this is once again another another miner we could use that does not consume a lot of wattage. So to me, this could be another good alternative because if it's not going to cost us much to run, you really you're really not losing out right here. This is why these are extremely sought after because they're five ten watts. You know what I mean to run on electricity. And they're pretty easy to start up from what I've seen. So these are a great another option, you know, heading in to this merge here to kind of help diversify your portfolio again. Now let's get into GPU mining, right? This is going to be, this is solely going to be my strategy for GPU mining. And once again, this isn't financial advice. It's just my opinion. You know, you could take it with a grain of salt. So the thing that I'm going to be looking at Okay, and I have a bunch of different coins up here right now. This is Flux, here's Firo, this is Vert coin. There's all kinds of coin. There's Beam, there's Eternity, Flux, Firo, you know, ETC, Ciro, uh, uh, Ryo, and I mean, there's all different kinds of coins that you could be mining. So the thing is, is to me, is what you're going to have to watch for, and this is where you're really going to have to pay attention is you're gonna you're gonna want to come over here to the network hash rates and you're gonna want to pay attention to these because look when it's down like this your yield of the coin is going to be a lot more right so look right now flux their network hash rate is up right now it's on it looks like it's on a slight downward trend a little bit so because ethereum's really profitable right now that's probably why people are hopping off flux when you're when you're when this merge happens, you're gonna to wanna to be checking out and going to like two two miners. So you're gonna to wanna to check these charts and also, you know, check the network difficulty on these guys because during this time, profitability, it's gonna be very slim. It's gonna be very small. 
you're going to have to really pay attention and not mine what everybody else is. Because um, I don't even know what coin I'm going to mine. So to me, this is stuff that I'm going to be, this is how I'm going to be searching for what I want to mine. You're going to have to check network hash rates every day. You're going to have to check difficulty. Probably most likely at first, most of these well-known coins like Firo, Ravencoin, Vertcoin, Flux, all those really well-known coins, I guarantee it, all the hash rate is just going to jump through the roof. And it's probably the yields and the profitability is probably going to be terrible. What am I doing right now to prepare myself, you know what I mean, for this particular time that we're about to hit here? So I've never experienced something like this. I've been mining, you know, a little over a year now, um, about a year and like three months. To me, this is, and I run this as a business. My strategy right now is, is I'm putting everything on Ethereum. I want to get my Flux and Firo nodes up before the merge. I'm also selling, you know, half my Ethereum and I'm, and I'm just stashing it away and I'm just stacking cash. So my goal is, is I want to try to get enough operating costs to cover maybe two to three years of mining because that way, if the yields are really high, but the dollar amount is really low, I will still mine. But if, if the dollar amount is low, as far as like, you know, fiat value, as well as the yields are low, I'm actually going to turn off my rigs temporarily until the market corrects itself. Because there's going to be people in the 30 cents, you know, um, you know, 25 cents and 20 cent people, all those people are going to get cut off. They're not going to be able to afford it at all to mine anymore. That it'll come down to, you know, whoever has the best electrical rates, you know, probably around the 10 cents, you know, would be the best number to get, you know, for residential. Price and fiat value is low, but the yield of the coin is high, then I'll keep mining. And I'll use my reserve funds and hodl my coins. So that is, that is going to be my strategy. I don't know if there's other miners who are going to do that. This time and era, this is when the the miners who were in this to get that quick dollar because it was extremely profitable in the beginning of 2021 till about halfway through the year before 1559 so all those other people who are kind of riding on that quick dollar process those guys are just going to get thinned out immediately they're going to jump ship they're going to sell everything and then it's going to be really an era of people who really want to mine and who are you know, trying to, to, you know, hodl and hold out until the next super cycle. Yeah, guys, I hope this video was helpful. So anyways, guys, this is the Mining King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.